Um, I had a something when I when I there's a, a book that came out recently, which is a translation of, of Metzger's work, mm-hmm. and and when I read through it, it, what's intriguing to me is I mean it seems like it's it's covering a lot of the things that the Gestalt psychologists talked about, but what I'm struck by is how they anticipated so much of what came later. That's what a lot of current uh, visual neuroscientists are claiming, in particular Lothar Spielmann, who recently retired from the University of Freiburg, has been essentially rediscovering all the old Gestalt work and Mm. showing how relevant it is to the kinds of issues that visual neuroscientists are today looking into, such as camouflage, uh, well, again, grouping issues. Uh, This book, um, Gazette de Science, Laws of Seeing, um, was translated under the uh, aegis of, Wolfgang, uh, of, of Lothar Spielmann, published by MIT Press. Um, it, in effect, is a huge bunch of demonstration experiments mm-hmm. that show the uh, old Gestalt principles, and uh, Betzka was very aware of that. He was a student of Max Fiatama, one of the last in Germany, and carried on the Gestalt tradition uh, during the Nazi period, for that matter, uh, this book came out in several editions uh, during the Nazi time. He no longer was able to make any reference to uh, to Max Wertheimer or to Kafka or Wolfgang Köhler, even, I think, in the book. Um, but he carried it on, and uh, it is today, again, very relevant, even though it was initially published, I think, in the mid-30s or so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Well, there's so much more to ask about. <laughs> Um, I mean, we can't do justice to it in this brief video clip. Um, let's see what else to ask about. There's so much more to ask about. Well, then, so it, it, Gestalt psychology came to America before and during World War II. Um, not really before. The first American publication was by Kafka, mm-hmm. who knew English. He spent some time in England. And he was invited to publish a paper in uh, the Psychological Review, I think, in 1922. Uh, The title of it was uh, Perception and Introduction to the Gestalt Theory. Mm -hmm. And that's partly responsible for uh, the general semi-misconception that all the original Gestalt work was in perception. Um, Right. Okay. Then uh, uh, Kafka came to the U.S., uh, Wertheimer in 1933, Köhler in 1935, and uh, yeah, the, essentially the center of gravity of Gestalt theory was uh, moved to the United States mm-hmm. in the 30s, 40s, 50s. By the 50s and 60s, it uh, was no longer anywhere near as prominent as it had mm-hmm. been in the 30s and 40s, uh, and it was almost sort of dormant uh, during much of the second half of the 20th century. It was only during the last uh, decade or two of the 20th century that it was rediscovered right. in terms of the problems being that they were dealing with being so similar to what uh, uh, modern neuroscientists were, were working on. Okay. Well, I had a question about Kurt Levine, but I'm wondering, who, uh, before I get there, I'm wondering, in terms of some of the more recent work, what, is, what, is some of the, what are some of the people or the types of work that stand out as being especially relevant to you? Well, again, I think that uh, Lothar Spielmann, and uh, his showing how uh, some of these classical gestalt issues, uh, even though different words are being used now theoretically and even for the phenomena, Mm -hmm. that the phenomena are extremely similar to what the gestaltists were working on. Mm -hmm. And that many of the models that um, were being used, particularly with the the computer revolution, while ingenious and able to uh, deal with many of the of the questions that have been raised by the Gestalters, um, are inherently uh, so ansummative that uh, a simple computer uh, model of uh, Gestalt phenomena may almost inherently be uh, impossible. It, it needs to be something other than just a simple addition of uh, all kinds of little uh, electrical things. Um, Right to to generate what really happens in uh, in in true perception. Right. Um, there are various other things that have occurred during the last uh, last, last half century. Uh, I think of Albert Michot in Belgium at Louvain, who did some beautiful work in the Gestalt tradition on the perception of causality, uh, literally perception in the sense of 
uh, generating stimulus patterns where you had one little object moving and making contact with another and then the second one moving. Uh, the temporal relations, the speed relations, and all these make a big difference in whether the movement of item A is seen as producing the movement of item B or not. Again, a clearly gestalt quality uh, causation. Um, Johansson in uh, Sweden is doing some fascinating work. Um, well, there are many others. This mm -hmm. one in particular uh, attaching uh, small lights to uh, dancers' elbows, wrists, shoulders, head, top, knee, and toe, and have them in the black, otherwise black costume in a totally dark room dancing. And mm -hmm. just the movement of these lights was enough so that uh, people who perceived this saw a person dancing, hmm. even though it's just dots of light. Right. Um, I guess I'm not really up enough on uh, many of the current uh, visual neuroscience issues, okay. but um, uh, Professor Peter Zell or uh, <laughs> uh, some others who are up on these things could be could do a much better job of showing how some of these old style principles are now again being right. <laughs> seen as relevant. Um, well, the last thing, so Kurt Levine was not a perceptual psychologist. He, he did do some perceptual work, too, oh, okay. but his but primary interest was in personality and, mm -hmm. and social phenomena. And uh, unfortunately, I think, uh, from his point of view, uh, Kurt in particular, to some extent Kofka and less, well, less Kofka and less Vietnam, saw him as not quite precise enough to be a proper Gestalt theorist mm. with his uh, topological models, which were interesting and generated interesting research and some fascinating phenomena, but it didn't have the rigorous experimental uh, nature that, um, that Vietama and Kula in particular were anxious to, to stay with. And for that matter, that's been one uh, reason, according to some outsiders like uh, the historian Mitchell Ash, why the Gestalt movement uh, became re relatively successful in the first half of the 20th century and being rediscovered again now. The holism theme has been around in Western thought since uh, the Greek days and before. Mm -hmm. uh, but what made the Gestalt version of holism uh, so successful, apparently, is that it was combined with uh, scientific rigor, right. careful experimental work and theoretical rigor. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank and you for the questions, and I look forward to uh, what should be an interesting colloquium by the man uh, from whom you, with whom you work for your doctorate. Absolutely. Jack Warner at 4 p.m. Yep. All right. Thank, thank you. you.